Lesson 2, Chapter 5, Output, Business Cycles, and Employment. 2.1, Deriving Aggregate Demand. Aggregate demand is planned aggregate expenditure on final goods and services at different price levels. Remember from before, aggregate expenditure is how much we would like to spend. Aggregate expenditure can be t undertaken by consumers, the firms, governments, as well as net exports. Let us use the letter Y to stand for GDP from now on. Aggregate demand, or total demand, turns out is not actually equal to the sum of all of the micro-demand curves being added together across different markets. Why is that the case? Suppose we have good one and good two, two different markets. Let's put the prices on the vertical axis P1 and P2, quantities on the horizontal axis Q1 and Q2. Let's start with good two. This is my typical demand. Let us also pick P20 as my start of price level. With a price that is quite low, I can tell my quantity demanded Q20 will be quite high. I can now draw demand 1 and try to find the same P, but let's call this P10 which is equal to P20 in value, and map out the corresponding quantity demanded, Q10. Ideally, I have two identical prices. I have two different quantities. I may have a point on my total or aggregate demand curve for both of the markets, good one and good two, together. The problem is, suppose the price of good two goes up to P21. I can tell right away, the price is higher, people would buy less, Q21 would be smaller. What would happen to market 1 as a result of the P2 rising? We actually cannot tell. Suppose good 2 is coffee, good 1 is tea. These two products are substitutes, meaning that they actually fight for the same customers. If the price of coffee goes up, chances are some people would switch to drink tea. Therefore, demand 1 for tea we start to rise. We may actually end up having a higher P1 as well as a bigger Q1, so we don't know what's going to happen. Suppose good 2 is still coffee. Good 1 is sugar. So these two products are complements. They're taken together, they're consumed together. If the price of coffee goes up, we buy less coffee. As a result, we would also buy less sugar. So this means good one demand may actually shift inward if good one turns out to be sugar. We may actually have a lower price and also a lower quantity. We don't know what's going to happen. Therefore, when the prices change, P20 going up in this case to P21, we know what happens in one market, but we actually do not know for sure what's going to happen in other markets. Therefore, we cannot actually add across different markets to find the aggregate demand curve. So how do we derive the aggregate demand curve? Turns out we have at least two methods of doing so. The first one is through wealth effects. Suppose we have savings or wealth of $5,000 and we choose to put this amount of money into a fixed term deposit for one year with say the Bank of Montreal. We agree to a nominal interest rate in terms of money of a payment of 3% to us by the end of one year. But the inflation rate, suppose it turns out to be 10%. In this case, the actual value of our wealth has actually shrunk by 7%. Because remember from before, there's a difference between a nominal interest rate and a real interest rate. Because our, sh our wealth has actually shrunk by 7%, our buying power has actually dropped as well. Studies have actually found that when the value of our wealth drops, the real value we feel poor. As we feel poor, we tend to actually cut back our spending. The actual value, studies have actually found that as our wealth drops by one dollar, we tend to cut back our spending by about three cents, which goes to show psychology matters quite a bit when it comes to spending. 
But what we can actually get out of this is that when the price level rises, the real value of our wealth drops. As we feel poor, we actually plan to spend less, and we would also end up spending less, demanding less. The relationship between the price level is price level going up, argued demand will be quite low. There's a negative relationship between these two variables. A second way of deriving the argued demand is to look at net exports. If the Canadian price level rises relative to the U.S. price level, because the U.S. is our main trading partner, our exports become less competitive because our exports have become more expensive. The U.S. would buy less from us. As a result, when our price level rises, our net exports will drop because our exports drop. The foreigners, the Americans, want to buy less from us. They plan to buy less from us. They also end up buying less from us. So once again, we get price level increasing and a rather weak argued demand. So the relationship between the price level and argued demand is negative. Let us summarize this by plotting this onto a graph. On the vertical axis, I have my general price level, consumer price index, or GDP deflator. Horizontal axis, I have my GDP, how much we produce, how much we can buy. The argued demand curve would look like this, negatively sloped. It actually looks very much like any micro demand curve. But please keep in mind, this is the result of something else, not the result of the summation of all of the micro demand curves. What is that something else? Let's recall what we have just done. We have price P0, which is quite high. Corresponding Y0, how much we would like to buy, is quite low. Why is this the case? Because when the price level is quite high, the real value of our wealth starts to drop. Our net exports would also start to drop. Spending on our products would start to drop demand is quite low. If we have a low price level, P1, the opposite would be true. We see from here we get a Y1 that is much bigger than Y0. Why is that the case? Lower price level increase the value of our real wealth. Foreigners would like to buy more of our exports. Argued expenditure on our products will start to rise, and hence the argued demand value is also quite high. We have seen how changes in the price level can affect the argued demand curve. Specifically, changes in the price level will correspond to movements along a given argued demand curve. Any other changes other than the price level will shift the argued demand curve. For example, an increase in government spending or strengthening consumer and investment confidence that would lead us to spend more, or a tax cut. Any one of these changes will increase our argued demand and therefore it will shift the argued demand curve to the right. Graphically, let's put the price level on the vertical axis, GDP on the horizontal axis. My initial argued demand, let's call this AD0. Increase in government spending, stronger investment or consumer confidence, or a tax cut will shift my argued demand curve to AD1. This means a stronger demand for goods and services. The opposite can also happen. Decrease in government spending weakening consumer and investment confidence or a tax increase will decrease our argued demand and therefore shift the argued demand curve to the left. So AD0 will shift to say 82 and 82 is a weaker argued demand.